welcome to let me bore you to sleep dot com my name is Jason Newland this is let me bore you to sleep please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyelids now If you would like to support this free service, uh, just please go to the website and there's a link that you can click for PayPal. Be my PayPal pal. I'd like to say thank you to Susan who uh, what's the word we use that gifted gifted me some cash so that I can pay towards the £152 a month it costs to run all the different websites and podcasts and stuff that I do yesterday all my troubles seemed so far away and I was reading a book about knots didn't get very far into the actual book. You could say I read one paragraph. You could say that. You could say I read three quarters of the book. Doesn't really matter, does it? What you say? It's just. It's just words. So it's four thirty in the morning which is about this, the time that I normally would kind of do a recording. But this is the third... No. What have I done so far? This is the fourth recording tonight that I've done. So I did a requested recording for... Um, well, someone sent me a message saying, would you help? Can you make a recording helping me to deal with a breakup, a relationship breakup? So I did a session today called Ideas on Dealing with a Relationship Breakup. Very uh, creative title, and I'm sure you agree. And... Um, I did that and it lasted about 50, 50 minutes. I was only going to do about half an hour. But as it turned out, I could have talked for about five hours on that subject. So, but I didn't because um, I figured listening to me for five hours talking about relationship breakups would be worse than any relationship breakup just <laughs> listen to the me for five hours so I didn't I just sort of uh, kept it relatively short at just under an hour it's uh, quite can imagine that someone listening to me for five hours and saying I'm going back to I'm going back to my boyfriend he may be an idiot but oh it's got to be better than listening to this bloke. And then I did a deep sleep whisper hypnosis session, which was number 129. Um, haven't done one for about four days, I think. That was about 22 minutes long. Then I did a... I actually did another request, uh, but this was for the, uh, what's it called, relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks podcast. And someone sent me a message recently asking me to do 
uh, a recording about uh, hypochondria and stuff like that so that's what I did so I did that and that lasted for about and that was about 50 minutes it might have been longer yeah about that and then so I uploaded all that stuff edited it uploaded it onto the web different websites onto the podcast and now Andre's really making a noise and I can't it's my fault. Oh, f- I actually had to pause the recording there, go into the bathroom, remove the mop bucket from the floor because he was pushing it around. And you can hear him in the background. He's basically, <laughs> he's angry with me because I've just given him a bath and a shower kind of a bit of both and the reason the only reason I did that is because he had picked up some kind of um, ticks or maybe even fleas I don't know what they were but they were he was riddled with them and this is very recent because I'm cuddling him all the time and I'm looking through his fur all the time so he must have picked them up through going through the grass yesterday or through some bushes or something because I take him out sometimes three times a day and he's just rubbed himself over everything basically if he was human he'd be arrested constantly So what I did is, because I've got special shampoo for him and everything, so special ferret shampoo. Just let you know, Andre is a ferret. In case you think that I've got a, a four-year-old son that I'm that's covered in fleas, and I'm using ferret shampoo on him. No, he's a ferret. I don't think they were fleas. I think they were ticks. They were anyway. There's a lot of them in the bath water now. Because I gave him the best scrub he's ever had. Seriously, really gave him a good scrub. And they were clinging to him, but they were clinging to his fur. And he'd been bitten a few times and stuff, so he's kind of scratching himself. But now, I think they're gone most of them are gone it's quite weird because they're nowhere else it's just on him it's like they're just clinging <laughs> they want him they don't want me oh. so I think they're just sometimes it happens with ferrets and same with cats and dogs they pick up stuff when they're in the garden but he's never had them before and I've had him for four years never happened before He's had the odd tick that kind of attaches itself to him. He's now eating his his dinner. So what he does when he's had a bath, and he does this every single time, he hates baths. When he and he struggles the whole time, and you know he makes such a big fuss about it. when I finished it doesn't last long it lasted a little bit longer today because I was really going through his fur and giving him a good scrub and making sure that I was washing every single part of him even those parts that we don't like to talk about just making sure that I got everywhere so that he was clean proper clean which uh, I think I might need counselling for to get over <laughs> to get over it but straight away he starts trashing the place making as much noise as he can 
He's scratching up at the carpet. Stuff that he doesn't normally do. You hear him in the background now. He's, he's going to be going through his tunnel. And he's going to be... T- he's going to be scratching at it. And he wasn't doing that before. I put his bag in the washing machine, so I'm going to wash that tomorrow. Because that's the bag he spends a lot of time sleeping in. And I'll get him some flea repellent stuff tomorrow at the pet shop. Just in case it was fleas. Just. So I did all this just for him. I didn't want to be giving him a bath and a shower because I had a hose as well I had to kind of use the spray to get to him because he's wiggling all over the place and I didn't want to do that at 4 o'clock in the morning I probably should have done it in the evening really like yesterday but I picked him up and I saw there was like I saw one that looked like an ant yesterday and I thought, ah, it's all right. It's just a creepy, like creepy crawly. God, this is making so much noise. It's really got the ump with me. But then I picked him up, and he was like, I had quite a few of them. I'm like, oh no, that's it. So it's it's almost like I've took... You hear him, he's really getting... He's not even walking quietly. It's like he's stamping. He's like a little kid. You know when when you're a kid and you get sent to your bed and you just stamp on the floor really loudly, really slowly as you walk upstairs making every single footstep count well that's what he seems to be doing except he's not walking up the stairs and he's not being sent to his room and he's not an adult or he's not a child he's not human apart from that it's exactly the same scenario and he just he's gone now I don't know where he's gone he went to the bathroom and started pushing and it's not it's a metal mop bucket so it makes noise banging it and he's banging it against the the sink the bottom of the sink now he's gonna get he's gonna got the slipper which is his girlfriend's head and he's gonna it's basically gonna be I don't know the right word to say it but He's going to be using a carrier bag for the body. That's all I'm going to say. And he's going to make as much noise as he can because he knows that I'm recording. And he's doing this purposely. He is. He can't look, he's looking over at me now and then. Are you annoyed yet? Have I annoyed you enough yet? It's nothing compared to how I felt in the bath. Now he's banging against the radiator. If the neighbour complains, I'm not answering the door. I'm just going to ignore the door if it goes. Your ferret's making a lot of noise tonight. Yeah, I know. He's purposely pulling everything back so he's against the radiator. He's so vindictive. Spiteful. You don't 
don't need me to talk really, do you? For that noise. this much noise. I just put it on pause again, picked him up, moved him into the bedroom, walked back in there and he's run straight back in. Funny you could see the visual that I'm seeing. It'd probably be more enjoyable for you. Because it's funny, funny to watch. So that's what my, my evening has been. Him being naughty for the last 20 minutes. Before that, before I gave him the bath, he was fine. Absolutely fine. He's been asleep nearly all the time. Been going out for walks. I think he's had two today, which he's been happy doing that. But now, oh no. getting squeakier it's all gone downhill I got a letter through the post today most letters do come through the post and it said that I'm gonna get a new door a new front door now for some people that's not as exciting as it sounds new front door that f filled me with uh, wonderment because I live in a council flat and I'm grateful to have you know this place but the door is a bit grimy it's like one of those old fashioned brown doors with a window and you know you can't you can't see who it is without actually them seeing you so when I get this new door it'll have a peephole I'll be able to look through it which is kind of and if someone blocks the peephole they just don't get answered so if they put their thumb in front of it or whatever they don't get to see me. So that'll be good. Nice. And these doors are really secure as well. And uh, I think it's just standard white. Because uh, the company that do it. And basically, when I moved in here a few years back, I've been here for. It'll be five years in April. I tell I'm putting him up for adoption tomorrow. He's doing my head in. Five years ago in April, so it's next April, so it's four and a half years or whatever I've lived here. And all of the doors are the same. Not, always, this, not just one door not everyone shares one door to get into their flats just like take turns I'd like to lock my flat today okay you lock your door on Monday 
you can have the front door on Tuesday and but when I moved in there was two one one flat had a new door being put in downstairs and then another one had a new door being put in shortly afterwards or maybe a year get to my age 10 years is like a month it's not at all don't know why I said that and but nobody else and I thought I wonder why nobody else has got a new front door well one of the flats is obvious because it's privately owned so the council are not going to replace that door because it costs it's, I mean, it's not like huge money for a front door but it's including the um, fitting of it and stuff you're probably talking about a thousand pound or something maybe 300 I don't know I've got no idea And that's it. Now he's he's put under his positions himself, so that he can do what he's doing, but also move his tail so it bangs against the radiator, so the whole block of flats can hear him. Because all the radiators are connected, aren't they? In these little places. I love him so much, but you know what? I'm gonna have to listen to that <laughs> that relationship recording that I did just to kind of get myself calmed down or make a new one what do you do when you want to chuck your ferret out the window so um, so this new door basically what the council is going to do is they're going to send a surveyor from the window company you know, they, they make windows and doors basically that's a salesperson to see whether or not I need a new door I bet you anything in fact I will I will give you a hundred pound for every person that they went to see that they came back to the council and said no they don't need a new door their door's fine their old door's okay we don't need to put a new one in I'll give you a hundred pound for each person each time that happened because it's never happened guarantee guarantee it's never happened so Maybe they've got a little backhanders going on. Maybe I shouldn't say that, should I? Of course, I'm sure that's not happening. And um, so I'm grateful. I think it's really cool. I get to, um, they're going to come in, I guess, measure the door. It's, it's all doors are, well, I'm not all doors are the same size because I'm sure some doors, smaller doors are, not as big as bigger doors are they so I guess it's all to do with the gap isn't it is what you fill the gap with because some gaps in my experience not all gaps are the same size you know sometimes you can ease your access than others sometimes you've got a kind of, well I've, I've really had to crouch down because I'm five foot eight so I'm quite lucky I can walk through most doorways and ignore the uh, mind your head sign because I generally just walk straight under unless I'm wearing me bouncy shoes I've got these you know shoes with springs on then that's different or stilts or if I'm on me pogo stick you know generally or if I'm wearing me top hat so it depends but then the thing is because it's made of felt it can dent quite easily so but I have banged my head a few times 
um, which is probably prevalent, probably obvious, in fact, by the uh, content of the, these podcasts. That I've took a few knocks to the head over the years. Um, as I shaved my head, uh, when was it? Probably about four days, five days ago. At the weekend, I think it was. Probably, I don't know, Saturday or Sunday or something like that. It's Thursday now. So I shaved my head. And I'm always... I don't always shave it as close as I did this time. So I've got this new shaver. It's electric. But it's it's quite a close shave. And... Uh, I could see some of the dents in my head. And so that was kind of interesting. Can you hear him in the background? This is probably the worst sleep session ever. Oh, what do I do? Put a little notice warning in the in the title. Warning there's been a ferret. A shagging ferret in the background, which is exactly what he's doing right now. He's humping. I'm just being honest. This is what he's doing. He's got an old slipper of mine. This is his girlfriend. This is his girlfriend, basically. So he's holding that in his mouth, and he's got an old pillowcase of mine, and a t-shirt of mine. And he's, uh, yeah, basically trying to create as much sound as he can. Well, I tried to put him into the other room to do it, but he, he just followed me into here. It doesn't do anything I say, ever. The only thing he does is when I say to him ignore me Andre ignore me he's very good at that follows that order really well but he um, if we play fighting and he gets a bit rough and I say gentle gentle and I only got to say it like three times sometimes 40 but generally only a couple of times and then he starts licking my fingers and being just gentle instead of biting them. So that's quite good. And the other thing he does is when we're walking, I'll say to him, and he'll kind of sniff at my feet. And I'll say, do you want me to carry you? And he looks at me and I ignore I said, no. Until he does the thing, so basically he puts both of his hands on my legs to let me know that he wants me to pick him up. So I do that, but I only do it when he does that. And also, yeah, another thing is, if I say give daddy kisses, he, he, licks, he licks the end of my nose, which is weird. But he's been doing that since he was a baby. Um, and he understands no and stop. He must have. He's heard it enough times. He just ignores it. Although sometimes if I'm... If I'm really firm, he does listen sometimes. But I'm really firm. That sounds wrong, doesn't it? I'm really, you know, it's just a little boy in here. I don't want to. I'm not into shouting and stuff like that. That's just ridiculous. But sometimes, uh, it makes me so angry. Like tonight, particularly, 
because I want to make a recording. I don't mind there being a little bit of sound in the background when I make these recordings, but not the level that there is tonight. He's basically on a big wind up. So I should have the new tour probably by the end of the month, which would be good. It's one of those that slam on their own. So if you just let it close, it closes and slams and shakes the whole building. So that's really cool. And, but it's like really, it's one of those that you, you lock and it has like all these different locks within it that um, lock. I don't know what, however, other words to describe lock. It locks, lock, lock, the locking locks with locks. And you can hear him now. Now he's getting even noisier. apologise for the the background music really this could be a new thing couldn't it God, imagine this if this took off everybody would be doing it we go on YouTube ASMR with background ferret shagging The other thing, the mouse is back. So we had had an invasion of mice in this building a couple of years ago. I only had one, and Andre. But basically, a mouse doesn't want to be in this flat with him. <laughs> it's the last thing any mouse would want. So they don't kind of really. If the, this one got into the into the living room, I think by accident. Oh. I think this is going to be a short recording, just because of the amount of uh, background. noise it's actually distracting me normally I don't get particularly distracted by stuff anyway there's the, the mouses are back and in my kitchen cupboard one's been inside there but it's the bottom cupboard, there's nothing nothing in there. But it basically can get between the flats through the kitchen, like holes in the kitchens or whatever. So that's a bit grim. But it's weird really. I don't really like mouses, but I got this ferret <laughs> running around. Mind you, I don't particularly like him at the moment, either. Sometimes when I've given him a bath, he lets off the worst stinks. Because he's trying to get his smell back. Because the shampoo takes away his smell. But he hasn't done that yet tonight. Anyway, I'm going to go because 
I'm going to have to move him into the bedroom because he's making too much noise in here. I don't want the neighbours complaining. I'll see you again next time.